Welcome everyone to a little bit different video here on Additional Pylons Games. Today, I want to talk to you about seven realizations, seven tips, seven, uh, I guess, lessons that I've learned in these first couple months of doing YouTube, and I just wanted to share them with you. Um, I know that I have a lot to learn as I keep growing, as I keep doing YouTube, as I keep trying it. Um, as of recording right now, my channel has less than 100 subscribers. Um, so I understand that I'm not necessarily the YouTube guru, right? The SEO guru, uh, master, that sort of thing. But what I am is I'm a channel that's right in the thick of learning and applying and improving and what it means to grow a channel successfully. Um, so I hope that you can uh, just gain a little bit from my perspective, from someone who's kind of in the thick of it and, uh, and go from there. So there are millions of videos that talk about growing your channel. Most of them include search engine optimization, branding, thumbnails, titles, tags, all that other stuff. Those things, I'm not going to include those in this video. There's for two reasons. One, again, I'm not that kind of like, I don't profess to be someone who has mastered that yet. Secondly, because there's a wealth of other videos that you can, that you can go and view and to cover those basics. So if there, if that's what you're looking for, go for that. Let me be clear. What I'm proposing in this video are lessons, realizations that are about our, the way that we approach YouTube, the way that we view it, our attitude as we do it, our perspective, our drives, our motivations. So let me be clear. Um, what I'm talking about in this video today doesn't replace those best practices of SEO and, and making good thumbnails and that sort of thing, right? It doesn't replace those. I'm not advocating you don't put tags into your videos. You should still put tags into your videos. I'm going to have tags on this video. So I'm not saying we don't do that. What I'm saying is that there are other things that we need to fix, that other things that we need to do, other things that I need to do in order to be successful at a YouTube channel. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So lesson number one, and for those of you who know me, for those of you who have met me, talked with me, uh, sometimes, sometimes the best thing that you can do is be a little blunt. And so I'm going to start off with the harsh truth. And this is lesson number one. The harsh truth is you deserve nothing, right? You deserve absolutely nothing. When you come onto YouTube, you don't, you haven't earned the right to have 10,000 subscribers. If you want 10,000 subscribers, you need to earn it. And that means being humble and being hungry. It means being humble about what your content and what you're providing and being hungry to improve, being hungry to do better. The people who have large followings have done something to earn that. They don't, they didn't deserve a million followers. They built a million followers, right? PewDiePie built 50 million followers. That's, he did it from the ground up. Everybody starts on YouTube with zero subscribers, everybody. So this is a lesson that's applicable to all areas of your life, school, work, YouTube, relationships, anything and everything, right? This world and the viewers on YouTube owe you nothing. They don't owe you a second of their time. They don't owe you anything. And the faster you take that to heart, the better. Because then when you build something, when you do get a subscriber, when you do get views, you can take pride in the hard work that you invest. You can take pride in pushing through those plateaus, take pride in pushing through the hard times the bad times, the times when you lose subscribers more than you gain them. So that when you come out on the other end and you've been successful, however that looks to you, you built something that you're proud of, right? Built something that represents all the hard work that you put into it, not necessarily the numbers, which is step number two, lesson number two, is that you should focus on improvement, not on numbers, right? So here's the reason why, a couple reasons. First, subs and views are the result of good content. They're the result of hard work. They're the result of improvement and consistent posting, all that sort of stuff. There's no substitutes for consistent quality content, at least legal substitutes for that. So if numbers are a result, then we want to focus on what is making that result, what's creating that result. If numbers are an effect, we want to focus on the cause. The cause is always going to be quality content, good content, well planned out, all that sort of stuff. So we want to concentrate on good quality content. We want to concentrate on consistent, consistently posting, consistently giving our viewers what, what they expect, what they need, what they want from us. Creating a community that will grow around your channel that you can lead and that you can, uh, that you can cultivate, right? So I'm not saying that you shouldn't look at your analytics. You should still look at your analytics because that's part of 
uh, being diligent with your channel. But what I'm saying is that make sure that when you look at your analytics, look at them with the intention to improve, not the intention to gloat or lament or base your success as a human being upon how many subscribers or how many views you got, right? You're, you should base your success on how much you've improved over the past mm, however many days, out, over the past however many weeks. So focus on improvement, focus on the things that you can put into your channel, not on the numbers, the things that come out of your channel, right? Tip number three is simply to be authentic. And here's why. Um, feel free to copy someone else's search engine optimization, their tags, their topics, copy their ideas, I don't care. What I'm saying is don't copy someone else's personality, don't copy their motivations, don't copy their dreams. And here's why, if you copy someone else, there's only two ways this ends up, right? You should be you, because if you aren't, then let's say you create a huge YouTube channel built upon some imaginary character built on copying some character, right? And you just, every time you come down and sit in front of the camera, every time you play, every time you present, every time you talk to the camera, it's, it's just a lie. It's someone else that you've dreamt up that, that other people want to see. Eventually, you're going to get tired of that person. You're going to get tired of being that person on camera. You're going to be tired of being that person on YouTube. And chances are you're going to end up abandoning YouTube or having to change your channel once you've gotten it to where it was. And you're just going to lose your passion because that channel doesn't represent you. So what I, uh, what I propose is the second scenario, the second alternative. Create a YouTube channel that represents who you are, that represents your personality, that represents just the authentic, genuine you, and it's going to be meaningful and intrinsically fulfilling. So that no matter how big it is, how small it is, no matter what kind of changes you make, it's going to be intrinsically fulfilling rather than fulfilling because of, again, focusing on numbers. So scenario two might take longer, but it's also sustainable long term. So if you want to be a YouTuber, if you want to be a vlogger, if you want to be a poster, if you want to be someone who's posting videos regularly, then I'd encourage you to be authentic so that it's sustainable long term because most channels take a long time to create and you're not going to you're not going to be able to get through the long slog of growing a YouTube channel if it's not authentically you. So, uh, tip number 4, <laughs> lesson number 4. Uh, you want to reverse engineer videos. So I work in education. I'm an education designer and I use backwards design, right? So you, in most people, when they think of education, they think that you start with the textbook or you start with the topic and then you start teaching it to, and then you like create assignments and then from there you do the assessments. That's, that's not the way that a, a good education works, right? Good education works backwards. So you start with what do our students need to be able to do and apply at once they're through this course. Okay, now how can we measure that they know how to do those things? How can we measure that they know these topics, these theories, these concepts? Okay, then what assignments can we give them to practice that? Then what content do we teach them to get them to the place where they can complete assignments, where they can then pass the assessment, where they can then apply these topics in real life? So you start with the end and work forward to what you do, right? It's the same way with YouTube. It applies the same way. You want to reverse engineer YouTube. So you start with what people are looking for, what they're searching for, what they're interested, and you find where that intersects with what you're interested in creating. Then you figure out what kind of content you can create to meet that need, and then you create the content. So you don't create the content, then figure out where it fits into someone's need, and then hopefully they search for it. You do it in reverse. So you're welcome to make videos that you want to make. You're welcome to make them whatever that's is very specific to you that if you want to do that that's fine i would just encourage you i would just basically say don't expect a video that you create on a whim to necessarily be as successful as what other people are searching for right don't expect them to have the same impact have the same following um as the ones that that they're really searching for so that's i don't know just keep it in perspective so tip number five lesson number five uh this is the second harsh truth um, second and the other harsh truth is simply have a life. And I know that, I don't know, that's, that's just what I'm going to say with it. Um, if you want to be interesting on YouTube, then you need to try and be interesting off of YouTube, right? You don't become a different person when the camera turns on as much as you might try to be, you don't, you, you're, you're, you might come up with a, you know, a, again, a, a face, a facade, um, of being someone different when you're on camera, but you, you really aren't. You're pretty much the same person. So if you want to be interesting on YouTube, you need to be interesting off of YouTube. Read a book, 
Catch up on the news, go to the movies, spend time with friends and family. Spend time away from YouTube, meet new people, plan an interesting weekend getaway, anything. So go do something else, then come back and talk about it and be interesting for your viewers. Relate it in an interesting way to your viewers. I'll admit that there are times when I, I struggle with this. I obsess on, oh, what's the next thing I can do on YouTube and what's the next thing I can record and what's the next series that I can do. But um, the, the way that I've resolved this is what, I'll, what I've started doing is I'm scheduling videos very far in advance so that way I'll have a week and a half of content already posted on YouTube so then I can take that week, I can take a week and not record anything. I can take a week and I can go on a vacation with my wife. I can take a week and I can go spend time with my family. I can take a week and I can go hang out with my guy friends and go see a new movie and, and just all these other things. So I take time. So basically I record ahead so that I have time to be away from YouTube because being away from YouTube is the best way that I can be successful on YouTube, right? Uh, studies have found that uh, the best pre predictor of success at a workplace is not how many hours that someone works or uh, how high, of, how many promotions they get, all that sort of stuff. The best predictor of success at work is how well someone rests outside of work, right? So the same goes for YouTube. Your success in the system is directly tied to how well you can rest and live outside of the system, away from the system of YouTube. So if you want to be good on YouTube, you need to be interesting off of YouTube. So second harsh truth for you there. Um, number six, tip six, lesson six. Don't fall for the trap of comparison. Um, this goes along with, you know, focusing on, on improvement rather than numbers. It also goes along with my next tip, my final tip. Um, here's what it comes down to, though. Don't let your self-worth as a YouTuber be wrapped up in if you're bigger than someone, if you're better than someone else, if you're smaller than someone else, right? Let your self-worth be derived from the sense of accomplishment you earn by building a channel piece by piece and producing content that, that you're proud of, right? Numbers are easy. That's why the people gravitate towards numbers. They tell us clear and tangible information. They tell us this many viewers and that much watch time and how many subscribers, all this sort of stuff. And in the same way that you shouldn't focus on your own numbers obsessively, don't obsess over someone else's numbers either, right? So it, it, it's that whole unhealthy uh, basis that my, or this whole unhealthy assumption that my content is worth a certain number of viewers. It's worth a number of subscribers. It's not. Again, that, that assumption that someone owes me something for this content. Nobody owes me anything for this content. My content is effectively worth nothing. So each viewer who watches my content is a blessing, is, is, is a real blessing to me. So I just want to, like, that's my perspective on it. So total transparency, though, this is the one that I struggle with the most, right? comparison and, and looking at numbers, I struggle with this. Um, and I find that when I focus on numbers, I lose a lot of my motivation to post because I begin comparing myself with other people, right? I see my video that is, you know, in my eyes, I think it's better than theirs, but it has half as many views. It has three quarters as many views, right? My content is better than theirs, but I have less subscribers, right? It, it, it just, it doesn't lead anywhere productive, right? So, my solution for the struggle of comparison and my solution is, you know, all these other tips that I've given, but also it's, it's this last tip. Um, number seven, and that is do the best that you can with the things you can control, right? So in the grand scheme of everything in life, but also in YouTube, there are only a few factors that you can control when it comes to your channel, right? You can, you can control what kind of content you put out. You can control the titles, you can control your playlists and, and your tags and all this sort of stuff. You can control where you where you post it on, on social media, all that sort of stuff. But let's be real, a lot, your success is dependent on other people. It's dependent on their actions, their decisions. It's dependent on YouTube, their algorithm. It's dependent on other channels. It's dependent on how trends rise and fall and society and culture and all these other things that are outside of your control. Frankly, there's a lot of luck. There's a lot of random chance. Many times, a video is successful because it happened to be in the right place at the right time. Not because it's any better or any worse. And that's just the harsh truth of it. Yes, at some point in time, eventually the better videos do start to rise to the top. But initially, especially initially, a lot of times with small channels, with small content, it's just a lot of luck. That, and that's, that's kind of hard to, you know, once you swallow that pill, it, it gets a little bit easier. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so 
my my encouragement to you is to work hard and do the best you can with the factors that you can control. So you can control search engine optimization. You can control thumbnails, replying to comments, tags, and, and effective titles and sharing on social media. So put yourself in the best position to grow by working hard at the things that you can control. So just to, just to kind of explain this point, just to kind of uh, cap this point off, uh, I want to give you a few quotes from men who are far wiser who have talked about this same thing. So first you've got Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was one of the framers of the Constitution, extremely brilliantly uh, gifted as far as intellect. And he said this, I'm a great believer in luck, and I find that the harder I work, the more I have of it. So the more the more he works, the harder you work, the more luck you have. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, one of his uh, one of his contemporaries, says, "Diligence is the mother of good luck." So it's the same thing: is that being good, being diligent in what you're given, where you're at, is what is going to foster, is what's going to grow your quote-unquote luck, right? You've got Carl Zuckmeyer here. Um, I believe he was a German playwright and author. Um, he says this: "One half of life is luck, the other half is discipline, and that's the important half. For without discipline," you wouldn't know what to do with luck. And so again, he's talking about how you've got these two parts, you've got all the things you can't control and all the things you can control. And you need to focus on the things that you can control so that when something outside of your control happens to you, you're able to do something with it, right? A final quote here is from Seneca, a uh, philosopher from ancient times, and he simply says this, and this kind of encapsulate what I've been saying. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. So when you're on YouTube, you, you don't know what kind of trends are going to, to rise to the top. But if you create quality content, if you quite create quality content consistently, if you follow the best practices, and if you come towards YouTube with this mindset, this mindset that the world doesn't owe you anything, so I'm gonna work hard to build something that, I, that, I'm, that I'm proud of intrinsically. If you build that, if you prepare for that, then whenever it does come your way, you're gonna have a channel in place that people say, how did I never know about this channel? How did I never find this? And then you're gonna to start to grow. So prepare, and then when life does happen to you, you can take advantage of it. Again, focusing on the things that you can control. So those, those are my seven tips for YouTube growth. Um, again, I'm not claiming to be a YouTube master, but what I am is someone who's working through the tough part of building a YouTube channel, right? I'm pushing uphill, I'm waiting for that snowball effect to kick in, and I'm experiencing these issues firsthand right now trying to resolve them. So I'm, for those of you who haven't started YouTube and are looking to, um, hopefully you can learn something from my short time so far and avoid some of the mindset mistakes that I've made uh, at starting this channel. So, and for those of you who are more well-established, maybe this is just refreshing for you to encourage you to continue to grow um, and maybe to, to help, you know, pay it forward and help out and reach out for those who are just starting. Um, I'm, I'll pro probably continue to update this video or, or something like it regularly as I continue learning, as I continue growing. Um, but with that said, I would love your feedback. So post below what other tips, what other suggestions, what other, other lessons do you have for new channels? Or if you are a new channel, what other lessons would you offer on top of this? Can any of you guys validate, you know, what I'm talking about, that sort of thing. So uh, obviously I want you to comment. Um, if you like this video, a like would mean so much. Um, a subscribe would also be great if you haven't subscribed. So just click that subscribe button and uh, check out some of the other YouTube uh, videos that are on my channel. Um, I create a lot of gaming content, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking to branch out into other areas like I'm doing in this video right now. So thanks again so much for tuning in and best wishes as you grow your own channel if it's new if it's old if it's small if it's if it's big so thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next time here on additional pylons game